Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about literal equations. It tests you on how well you know you're solving to get to a particular variable that you're solving for. So literal equations changes it up where you've got more than one variable within a problem. Now it'll tell you what it wants to solve for. So in number one, you'll see it wants you to solve for x but you've got some other variables thrown in there. So you're not going to be able to get a really nice, pretty, you know, x equals three. You're not going to get an answer like that. It's going to be a little messier, but your goal is really just to isolate the variable that they're asking for. So for number one, you'll see that they're asking for x. So I think it's a good idea to go ahead and just either highlight or circle or use a color pencil or something and just know what it is they're wanting you to solve for. So you can really look at it and think, okay, how can I get that X alone? And really the best strategy is just to pretend these are numbers, pretend they're not variables. I know it looks scarier when there are letters, extra letters thrown in there, but just pretend they're numbers. Pretend this B is really a six. I want to get the X alone. The easiest first step is gonna be to get my B over to this side. Now, I told you in some of the last videos, I always like to get the variable we're solving for alone on the left. Um, when you're talking about literal equations, it's really just your preference. So. When I'm doing literal equations, I'm gonna go with whatever is easiest, but definitely when we're solving regular equations or inequalities, get the variable to the left. Literal equations, eh, just kinda go with whatever's easiest. I think it's gonna be easiest to just leave the X where it is in this case and get everything else over to the left. So let's start with the B. This is a plus B. So we need to subtract B, right? I wanna do the inverse operation, the opposite operation, so that these cancel to zero. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now you might say, oh, I, I can't combine that six minus B, those aren't like terms, and you're right, we can't. So that's okay, we just rewrite them. I just write six minus B equals, and I still have my M, X and remember X is what I'm trying to solve for. So this is really M times X. I know that because they're hugging each other up close. So I need to divide to split them up and I want the M to be the one that goes away, right? I want that to reduce to one. But what I do to this side, I have to do to this side. So you'll notice now my X is alone. I can't combine six and M. I can't combine negative B and M. None of those are like terms. So I'm just gonna rewrite this as X equals six minus B over M. So remember I said, we're not gonna get a final pretty answer. We're just really moving things around to get the variable we want alone. That's all this is. In my second one, it wants me to solve this equation for y. So I'm gonna just highlight my y. So remember, that's what I'm trying to get alone. So in this case, it's gonna be easier, I think, to leave the variable on the left side and get everything else on the right. I'm just gonna go with whatever's easiest. So instead of trying to separate this negative four and y first, Let's move this 3x over. Let's just keep it simple. So this is a plus 3x, so I want to do the inverse. I want to subtract 3x. I want that to cancel to 0. What I do to this side of the equation, I have to do to this side. So let me bring down what I have left. I've got negative 4y equals... Now I can't combine 12 minus 3x, those are not like terms. I'm just gonna rewrite it and I'm gonna be careful to rewrite it in standard form. So I'm gonna put the negative 3x first, then the positive 12. Remember in one of my first videos, we talked about standard form and having your variables first and your constant second. And so looking back at here, I should probably go ahead and switch that. So I could rewrite this as negative B plus six over M. 
So coming back over here, I subtracted my 3x. I, I rewrote it because I couldn't actually combine these two terms. Now I want to still get my y alone. Now that's a negative 4 times y. So I want to do the inverse. I want to divide by negative 4 because I want those to cancel to 1. Now what I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Now some teachers prefer to write this whole thing over negative 4. You can totally do that. Personally, I like to show that each term is being divided by negative 4. I think it's just kind of easier to see when we can combine things and maybe simplify or reduce them, and we definitely can here. So let's reduce what we can. I've got my y alone, which is what I want. Could I reduce negative 3 over negative 4? Um, in terms of the numbers, no. 3 fourths is as low as it goes. But remember that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I can go ahead and make this a positive 3 fourths x. Now this is positive 12 divided by negative 4. So that's going to be a negative 3. So I was able to get my y alone. In this last example, hopefully you'll recognize this sign. This is pi. Um, it's 3.14, so on and so forth. Um, so we just represent that with the symbol pi. Don't let the pi scare you. We treat it, in this case, kind of like it's just another variable. We want to, in this case, it's wanting us to solve for s. So I'm going to highlight what I'm solving for, the s. And I want to get the s alone. And this, in this case, I'm going to keep the s over on the right side. I'm going to try to get all this other stuff over to the left, one step at a time. Remember I told you guys in a recent video that we can easily get rid of a fraction by multiplying by the denominator. So in this case, my denominator is 360. If I multiply this whole thing by 360, those cancel. But what I do to this side, I have to do to this side. So that means I also have to multiply that A by 360. So let me bring down what I have left. I've got 360A equals pi r squared s. So notice all I did was I knocked out that denominator to make this a little better to look at. So now I'm solving for s. So what this means is pi times r squared times s. So if I want to isolate the s, I just have to divide by the pi and the r squared. The pi's will cancel, the r squares will cancel. Now I'm just left with s. But what I do to this side, I have to do to this side. I'm going to say that probably 20 million more times in this unit and for the whole rest of this class. So just get used to it. So let me rewrite what I've got here. And I want to make sure I simplify if I can, but looking at this, I know I can't simplify any of that. None of it's like terms. So I'm going to bring down my s equals 360a, 360 times a, over pi r squared. So there would be my final answer, and I didn't square my final answer there. Okay, so that is literal equations. Again, you're just using your basic rules of solving. It's just throwing a couple extra variables in there to try to trick you, but don't let it. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.